We're going to have a glorious weekend. I'm thankful to be here with you. It's been quite a week, hasn't it? No weapon formed against you will prosper. We are raising up a standard against the enemy today, and we're going to put to flight some of his lies. I don't know about you, but I've been noticing that there's been an increase of strategic war from the enemy. Do you know why? Because we're on the right path. We're heading in the right direction. And whenever you're on the right path and you're heading in the right direction, there'll come obstacles and distractions and the enemy will just throw stones and he'll throw things in your path to not only try to abort you from the purpose and plan of God for your life, but to try to abort the purpose and the plan of what God is doing in churches and ministries in our region. There are churches and ministries in our region that God is supernaturally raising up And it's a time of strategic um, uh, preparation for us because what's going, what's in the process of happening in the realm of the spirit is what I see is I see all the seeds that we've been sowing, all those seeds that we've been sowing. And there are multitudes and multitudes that are in the valley of decision. And those seeds have been sown into those hearts And I could see in my heart that those seeds are starting to germinate. And they're starting to bud. And they're going to bring forth an abundant fruit. That's why it's very important that we're prepared as churches and ministries. But it's also very important that you stay focused. That you look away from anything that would distract to what God has called you to be individually and to what God has called you to do corporately as a church. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about overcoming the distraction of offense. With that in mind, I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 in the Amplified. It says here in this verse, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses... My father is up there in heaven, and so is my mother. And now my father-in-law is up there in heaven. My best friend Elaine is up there in heaven. And that your friends and your relatives are up there in heaven. You can't pray to them. You can't talk to them. But the scripture says that we're surrounded by these great cloud of witnesses. And what they're doing is they are watching us run the race that is set before us. They have borne testimony to the truth, and it says here, since then we're surrounded by them, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily and deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Now, every one of us has our own individual race, and we'll get into that in a minute. And then it says in verse 2, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first and incentive of our belief and is also the finisher of our faith. So God is saying, listen, each and every one of you are in a race. Each and every one of you has a purpose. Each and every one of you has a plan and a destiny. And did you know that the greatest treasure that you can find is your purpose and your destiny? Why was I born? Why am I here? Hallelujah. You know, you can find out your purpose and your plan and your destiny if you'll just listen to your heart. God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. So where your treasure is and your desires are, that's where your heart is, and that's where your purpose and your plan and your destiny is. 
the scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, talks about all the different seasons in our lives and all the different things that happen in our lives. But it says in verse 11 that God has written or put eternity in our hearts. So eternity, your purpose and your destiny is already in your heart. You just have to discover it. Are you with me? We need to run our race freely without distractions. But one of the greatest distractions known to humans, in my opinion, especially this weekend, is the distraction of offense. Are you listening? Is everybody out there? Have you gone home? Offense, bitterness, unforgiveness are hindrances to destiny. These are distractions and weights, my friends, that will keep us from reaching our full potential. Now, Jesus warned us of distractions, these distractions at offense. He said in Matthew 24, 10, he said, and then many shall be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. I don't think I've ever seen a time in a season where there have been so many people so offended with one another. You would have think that it's time for us to grow up. You know, the Bible says the five-fold ministry gifts have been given to perfect and mature the saints so that we would grow up into him in all things. But there's been an attack on our love. There's been an attack on our love walk. Why? Because, again, God said, I am about to do some great and mighty things. And if I could bring division among my people, if I could distract them with offenses and get them out of love, I've got them off course. But we're getting back on course. I don't know about you, but there's always that one person. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? That one person. And one day I was meditating on the, before the Lord, and he had given me this scripture, and he had been talking to me about, the, actually we wrote it about it in the book Focus, about the distractions. And I can remember I was in this season of a lot of prayer, and I was spending a lot of time with God, and just praying, and, and I was reading his word, and I wrote this prayer card, and it's called A Prayer of Commitment to Walk in Love. And I was reading it out loud, and I was making my confession, and I got to the point in my prayer card where it said, and love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. And the Lord said to me right then and there, I had my feet up on my desk, I was in my pajamas, you know, we're praying, nobody sees us, we're praying, hanging out in my office, and aren't you glad God looks on the heart, he doesn't care about all that outward stuff? Sometimes I think that's a distraction. I think sometimes, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I told my team they think I'm crazy. I'm going to have a corporate united prayer meeting, and I'm going to tell everybody, wear your sweats, bring a blanket, bring your pillows, don't wear any makeup, put your hair in a ponytail, and we are coming to seek the Lord. Amen. Enough of all this outward stuff. You know, we all want performance, performance, performance. How about performance of the heart? The Lord loves clean hands and a pure heart. Those are the people he visits. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and the Holy Ghost said to me, you are paying more attention to that person that has hurt you than you are to me. And he says, I want you to turn away from that. Because every time I would set my heart to seek the Lord, instead of looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, I was looking at him. And what he did, and what he said, and how mean he was. And it was like a filter and something like between me and Jesus. You know, the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. And my purpose and my destiny, I have discovered, is to teach people how to pray and to demonstrate prayer. And you can know your purpose and your destiny if you just look at what you used to do when you were a kid. Are you listening? When I was a little girl, I used to hide in the bushes, and I used to go in the bushes, and I used to, you know, get in this little, little tiny little area in the bushes, and I used to pray to God. When I was a little girl, I used to sit in the, my backyard, and I used to look up into the sky, and I wanted to see God's face. Now, as a 62-year-old adult, 
My dream is to teach people how to pray. My dream is to, like Moses, to see God's face. Are you listening? Are you thinking about your purpose and your destiny right now? Think about it. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal to you many things in these services this weekend. And so the Lord said, you're looking at that, that offense more than you're looking unto me. And my gifting is to teach people how to pray. So if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. I won't be anointed. The Bible says when you pray, you know the scripture, Mark 11, 23 and 24. You know, we quote the first part. We, you know, you know, say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. When you pray, believe you receive it. We know that prayer, don't we? But you know, at the end of that part of that scripture, it says, and when you pray, forgive. If you have aught against anybody. So Lord, we're going to get rid of this distraction. Okay, let's go on. There are many things we could do, but I only have about 25 minutes. But I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit's going to do for you. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. The power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. And he is going to manifest himself in and amongst you. He is the great therapist. <laughs> The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me this weekend to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up the wounds. To everything, there is a purpose and a time under, and under heaven, and there is a time for you to be healed. And it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've been for therapy. How many of you have ever had so many things to deal with and wounds and things you didn't know how to deal with and you had to go to therapy? God help you if you didn't find the right therapist because there are a whole bunch of them out there. And we thank God for godly therapists. If you need therapy, go for therapy, but make sure they're grounded in the word of God. But did you know that the greatest therapist of all times is the Holy Spirit? He will rise up within you. He will heal your brokenheartedness. He will give you the grace to forgive that person that despitefully used you and abused you. He'll give you the grace to pray for your enemies. He'll give you the grace to forgive. And I believe that's the kind of grace we have here today. Amen? Yeah. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Yeah, right. Easier said than done. How many of you know we're all human? We, ha we have a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. But, you know, our, our human emotions, these are the things that we've got to reel in. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. How about bringing our emotions into subjection? Well, how are we going to bring our emotions into subjection? We submit ourselves to the word of God. And God said in his word, my son, if you attend to my words, if you incline your ears unto what I'm saying in the scripture, he said, listen, it's going to help you a whole lot. It's going to be life unto those that find it and health. Another translation says healing. So if you need healing and you need to walk in love and you need more to operate in forgiveness, study scriptures about the love of God. Study scriptures about forgiveness. Find out what Jesus said. You think about the ultimate betrayal. Jesus went to the cross. He was betrayed by everybody. And you know what? <laughs> Here's a good lesson for you and I. All he did was good things. There wasn't a mean bone in his body, but he was despised. He was rejected of man, a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief. He healed all that were oppressed of the devil. All he did was be good, and still he was betrayed. Do you know that you could be the nicest person, the most loving person, and the enemy will take advantage of that? I don't know how we're getting off on this subject. I got seven pages of notes, and I knew that I would follow some of them. But, you know, you got to let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost wants to do. Amen. It's all about the Holy Ghost. Amen. I told the Holy Ghost, I don't know what's in the hearts of men, but you search the hearts. You know what is the mind of the Spirit and what's on the inside of our hearts. But Jesus, all he ever did, he was good. 
He was 100% good, and he was despised, he was rejected, and they nailed him to the cross. Do you know that that was part of the plan of God for him to betray, be betrayed? You think about the life of Joseph. Do you know that I, I don't really understand everything about everything in the Bible, but I do know this. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. He was put in prison after he went to Potiphar's house because of a lie. Then he was raised up, and because he knew how to interpret dreams, he was all of a sudden in the palace. You know the story. And then when his brothers finally came to him, they said, forgive us. And then, you know, you know Joseph just said, listen, am I not in the place of God? What you meant for evil, God turned it around for the good. What you and I need to do is we just need to forgive the offenses and let these things go. Well, how many times am I supposed to forgive? What did Jesus say? Seventy times seven. We're going to get into this. In my book, Focus, simply defined offense is paying attention to unjust treatment from others or ways people have hurt us in the past. Offense holds on to those hurts after letting them go. Now, in speaking about your, pur your purpose, I just want to inject something here. I went to a meeting with Cindy Jacobs this summer, <clears throat> and I learned something very interesting. And one of the things she said, she said, what disturbs you? What really disturbs you? Well, then that's what you're called to do. But I want to add one more thing to that. Destiny is found in what disturbs you. But it can also be found where you've had pain. Hear me now. God can use your pain and turn it into purpose. Your pain can be turned into your purpose. Listen to me. There is purpose in your pain. 2 Corinthians 1.4, New Living Translation says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others where they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given to us. I don't want to be your friend if you haven't been through hell and back and had a lot of pain in your life. Because I found, and let me tell you about my life. I'm going to be honest, because I can't be anything but honest, just like your pastor. He is the real deal. That's why we get along. I don't like phony baloney preachers. Let me tell you something about my team. And I, it's amazing. They know everything about me, in and out, up and down, oh, the whole real deal, the raw deal. And you know, they honor me, they respect me, they love me, we love each other, we're there for one another, we bear one another's burdens, and we're fulfilling the law of Christ. Knowing my friends does not make me like them any less. When you really know somebody, you have intimacy with them. Especially when you're a mature believer. I want to play a video for you right now. I'm going to ask my guys to play it, please. Mary had a call. She had a destiny to fulfill. Her destiny was to bring mothers of murdered children together so that they could heal. But in order for her to be, le be released into her destiny, she had to forgive. You got to forgive, my friends. You got to let it go. It's time to let it go. Did God cause the pain? Nope. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God will take the pain, and he will turn it around and use it for your destiny. The forgiver should not think it's either or terms, either forgiving and abandoning a quest for justice or seeking justice alone without forgiving. The two moral virtues of forgiveness and justice can and should be applied together. Someone once said, you can forgive someone who's wronged you and still call the police and testify in court.
The forgiver does not excuse the unfair behavior, but offers goodness in the face of unfairness. Or <clears throat> you don't open up to the person. Their words or behavior do not define you. God defines you who you are in his word. It's important when you forgive, if you have to, set up healthy boundaries. You don't have to be a doormat that somebody just keeps walking over. God will give you wisdom in setting up healthy boundaries. It's not his will that you just keep getting hurt over and over and over. The person may never apologize. Get over it. That's pride. He owes me an apology. Nobody owes anybody anything but to love them. They don't owe you an apology. Don't wait for an apology. They may never apologize. And like we said, God will use everything that you have gone through. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to just lift your hands up to the Lord. Let's just all lift our hands up to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here to continue the work in our hearts. I could see some of you had such hard hearts. And it even changed your personality. And I could see the Lord just reigning. There it is. Breaking up the foul ground. And he's coming and he's reigning on, you, on the, 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 the ground of your heart. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for these people that you have given me this weekend. I pray, Father, that you would give them the grace to forgive, the grace to let go. There are many, many that are running in this race that is set before them. And I could see, Father God, that you're about to do some new things. So today... I want you to use your spiritual imagination. I want you to start throwing it off. Just throw it off. Just throw it off. And say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, today I let go of that offense, of that pain, that hurt. I stop looking at that, and I turn my head, and I look unto you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Take what I've gone through. Take everything about me and use it for your glory. May I find purpose in the pain and be a blessing unto others, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for watching today. We pray this message has impacted and blessed you. New Beginnings Church exists to lead people into a life-changing, spirit-empowered relationship with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to support the vision here at New Beginnings, just head over to our Give page. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.